Hi everyone, this is Rochelle with Grief Recovery with Rochelle. I had a few extra moments this morning on this beautiful rainy day. It's so awesome. And I thought, oh, I'm going to sit down and talk about what the When Children Grieve program is. When Children Grieve is one of my favorite programs. You want to see a different future for all of us? We all need to get good at When Children Grieve. When Children Grieve is a six-week educational program that I teach to adults. Now, I know that sounds weird, but it's about when children grieve. Yeah, it is. But I teach the adults because, well, let's think about it. You could send your kids to me, and I could teach them all kinds of wonderful things, and I could really help them in that moment. But what happens when they go home to the most important authority figures, those who are raising them, the ones they have the most trust or, or um, authority built into, and if those people aren't doing the same things that I am or using the same tools that I'm teaching your child, the child really can become confused and conflicted and then we're really in trouble. Then they're really going to shut down. So I teach the adults. I empower the adults because they're your children. Don't you want to know how to help them? Don't you want to know and have the tools on what to do when your children are hurting? So that's what I do. I teach the adults through a six-week program what to do with your kids when they're hurting. Now, how do we know when our kids are hurting? Well, it can start really young. Um, I'm sure they all cried when you took their bottle away or their pacifier or hit it or whatever you did. Um, or when they lose their favorite security blanket or their favorite little stuffed animal, right? Or maybe when we move as small children, um, maybe they really have a hard time sleeping after that. Or they're not eating right. Or their energy is just different. In kids, we see sleep changes, um, eating changes, mood changes, behavior changes, concentration changes, which really starts to show up when they're going to school. They have a hard time concentrating um, and staying focused, staying on task, just different things like that. So those are some early signs that you might see in your kids. Concentration, mood, attitude, behavior, um, eating, sleeping patterns. These are some changes that you might notice. I noticed when we moved here to Santa Clarita, I didn't know the tools of grief recovery, and my little one started chewing on her nails, like that same weekend. And I knew it was about the moving, but I didn't know what to do about it, which is maddening. It's such a horrible feeling when you know something's going on with your child and you don't know what to do. That's what When Children Grieve does. It teaches the adults what to do when they see these things. Um, the importance of it is just, I can't, I can't say it enough. It's not just for adults, though. It's for all caregivers. So perhaps you're a teacher and you recognize, hey, that student's kind of been sleeping on their desk a little bit more. Or, gosh, their grades have gone down. But interestingly, their grades could have gone up. Is that a coping mechanism for them? Perfection? That was for me. Do better. Do better. They'll love you more. Things will be better. If I just do my best and I just do really well, it should keep things smooth and gentle and, and safe and peaceful. Kids are very, very sensitive to safe environments. They, they build a relationship with everything. Their room, their home, their bed, just whatever is routine, they build safety and comfort in. So when we change these things, they feel it. So it's not just about death and divorce, which kids feel the death. They feel the divorce. And the challenge is we are also feeling the death, most likely. We are also feeling a divorce, most likely. Um, but we also are affected by moves and changes in friends and different things. And so that might keep us from engaging with our kids, but also just flat out not knowing what to do. So imagine how cool it could be for your family. You see your child going through friendship issues or being bullied at school you can become their coach. You can teach them and help them. This is why I love this program. It changes families. You want to change a family? Start going after how you are shaping your kids. Not that you are messing up now, not that you're doing it wrong now, but it is fair to say we may not know everything. I don't. I don't know everything, but I do know that When Children Grieve is fantastic, and I use these tools every single day. Just when my kids come home from school, when I'm picking them up in the car, you know, conversation, I notice their energy is down, I know what to do. The first thing you're going to do, let me back up. The definition of grief is the feelings you have, 
that are very completely normal and completely natural. The feelings you have after loss or the feelings you have, the conflicting feelings you have after change. A move, for example. Kids could be really excited about the move. Maybe they get a bigger room. Maybe they get a bigger home. Maybe they get a bigger yard. But they are still going to grieve the loss, the change, from what they knew as familiar. The um, Their room is different. Their friends are different. Their school might be different. Just the route you take. You have no idea what we've what they've built a relationship to. Maybe they're used to seeing that one dog on the way to school every day. That's a change in their familiar, and they feel that. Those feelings are normal and natural, and they're called grief. So conflicting feelings, that's human nature, isn't it? We can be excited and sad at the same time. It's just that so often in society, I see that they want to focus on the joy, the positive, the good, while leaving the sad and painful and negative over here unaddressed, and that really has... Um, really negative consequences. Grief is cumulative and it's cumulatively negative. It builds up and it builds up in a more negative way. So the more that we go unresolved or unacknowledged from childhood on, it's getting more and more negative for us guys. So we turn into some messed up adults <laughs> or it's just some really hurting ones and we need we need grief help. It's not It's not a bad thing to learn new tools. We're always trying to learn something, right? I mean, how many self-help books lie on the shelves? We're always trying to learn something. So the biggest helpful tip that you can take away today to start putting into practice in your home for your children, for connection, this is actually helpful for everyone in the home, is to go first. So what does that mean to go first? By go first, I mean that you are going to start telling your emotional truth. And that can be hard if you are unresolved with your loss. If you start to tell the truth and you're filled with pain or frustration or aggravation or even anger, you have probably something unresolved in there. So then we could go to the regular grief recovery method, help you through your steps so you can be a more present person with your kids. So by going first, um, let's say, for example, our dog died. Um, so my emotional truth about the dog might be, as I'm coming home, oh, I just, for some reason, was thinking, oh, no, I wonder if the dog was barking as we're pulling in the driveway. Our dog used to bark a lot, and I, it would cause me stress and grief and just, you know, conflicting feelings. Are, is somebody going to call the cops on us? Is he, is, do you think he's being abused? What's happening? So I would say that out loud. Oh, gosh, I just had a vision of the dog barking. Wow, I can't believe that guy's gone. I miss him sometimes. I don't miss his barking, but I miss him sometimes. And that would be an emotional truth of mine that I would share out loud because time doesn't heal any wounds. So it's okay to bring things up even though they've been passed for a long time. Society wants to tell us, well, aren't you over that by now? Uh, why are we still talking about, you know, we say things like, oh, we don't cry over spilt milk. Yeah, but if you're unresolved, you do. So you either feel it and don't talk about it or we talk about it all the time. So both of those are signs in kids that they're unresolved. When they just refuse to talk about something that you have a feeling is really bothering them, or when they bring it up randomly, you know, oh, it's really bothering them. Recovery for our kids looks like they don't really bring it up anymore. It's kind of gone. They're kids. They, they heal and adapt really well, and they move right on when they've been properly recovered um, through a grieving experience. So the first tip for you is to go first. Tell your emotional truth. Tell it randomly and tell it with a period at the end, not a dot, 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 and expect your child to fill in the rest of that sentence with their emotional truth. Anytime you're telling your truth with an expectation attached, they will not respond well. It's not a safe place. There's a forcing going on. They feel that exchange of energy. It doesn't go really well. So the best way to get your kids to start talking is for you to start talking. I know that, um, you know, Daddy and I aren't living together anymore, and I feel really sad about that. Sometimes I miss him. I don't really miss, you know, some of the hard times. Sometimes I miss just having a friend, whatever it looks like. Um, your truth is going to be different. It's going to be different from day to day, from thought to thought, but sharing your truth. Don't confuse that with making your kid your confidant or your, I'm dropping all my my baggage per se, 
on my child, but it's okay to share your emotional truth. I'm really missing that person, or I feel sad about this, or gosh, I, I can't believe this is where we are, and I feel sad about that, or embarrassed, or ashamed. And um, so I guess that's kind of the best. Number one helpful tip for you with your children is to go first. And I hope it gives you a little bit of clarity about what Children Grief is. It's a magnificent program. In fact, I have my next one starting April 12th at 10 a.m. at the office. So if you'd like more information about that, I'd love to talk with you about it or email or text. Phone number 661-400-9067. Website, griefrecoverywithrochelle.com. You can um, email me there, find my phone number there, find information about the class, whatever you want to do. But I, you're definitely invited. I'd love to have you. Um, even if it's just for free information to come in and learn what the class is about while your kids are in school. That's why I like that one in the daytime. And um, because really there's no better coach than you for your kids. Do the steps that your child needs so that they can feel better. And all of it we can do together. I love you and I'll talk with you next time.